Hi, welcome to another episode of What's It Like? I'm the Novice Explorer, and today I want to talk about inspiration, specifically those people who inspire me to go out and uh, achieve my goals in life. So the first person I want to talk to you about has climbed Everest, has hovercrafted up the Nile, served in the Royal Grey Scots and the SAS, as well as leading a foreign military on, in a reconnaissance platoon on raids against rebel communists, has circumnavigated the globe, travelling through both poles using only surface transport, a world first, has um, travelled through the Antarctic continent unsupported, again another world first, is the oldest Briton to complete the marathon destables and cut his own fingertips off in his shed at home after suffering from frostbite. Of course, I'm talking about the world's greatest living explorer. And if you didn't know already, I'm talking about Sir Ranulph Fiennes. This is, I mean, like I said, the world's greatest living explorer. The life that this guy has led and continues to lead is incredible. He is what every young boy, you know, dreams of becoming as an adventurer. I first really read about his life in this book, Mad, Bad and Dangerous to Know. Um, and he's got tons of books out there, but I really, really enjoyed this book because it starts from an early age in his life and covers him growing up and various incredible expeditions that he's been on that I haven't even had a chance to mention, including the mischief he gets up to whilst in the military. You wouldn't believe that it was a real story if it wasn't written down on the paper in front of your very own eyes and how this guy has not become you know, the guy to play James Bond, I, I don't know, because he really does lead the life that would back up that role. Um, and he, he, you know, I, I know that he's credited with inspiring so many modern day adventurers and explorers just in his own life. And, you know, he's just pushed the boundaries again and again and again. And he's got so many world firsts to his name, so many service medals to his name, just so many incredible achievements. And you know what? I wish I led a life that was even a tenth as interesting as this guy has. And yeah, he's a huge inspiration because I hope one day to be able to look back at my life, as I'm sure he does, and to be totally appreciative of, of what I've been able to do and have no regrets. So Sir Ranulph Fiennes, the world's greatest living explorer, inspiration number one. The second guy I want to talk to you about um, also served in the military and has since become an incredible photographer and adventurer in his own right. Um, he's walked the length of the Nile, walked the Himalayas. Um, most recently, he's walked from Russia to Iran. He walked in South America through the Darien Gap, one of the most formidable um, rainforests or jungles in the world. Um, he, he's just an incredible adventurer. And, and I've taken a lot personally from his story um, that, I, uh, that I think's really driven me um, recently especially considering uh, the accident I just had in China, um, cycling around the world, came off the bike, I've had to come home to recuperate before I can go back and continue. Um, and spoiler alert, in this book, Walking the Himalayas, he has, a, he has an accident whilst on his adventure. His car literally goes flying off the edge of a cliff. He's lucky to be alive. It, it smashes around on the ground and he climbs out with, a, I think, a broken arm and, and maybe a broken shoulder. He f he's airlifted to hospital, flies home, and um, when he's at home, he has an operation. And, you know, four to six weeks later, he's back on the road and on his adventure again. And to me, really, that spoke to me a lot about having that drive and getting out of that negative slump and learning to deal with, with what you can do in that moment. You know, you're injured, there's nothing that you can do but recuperate, and then when you have the opportunity, get up and get back to it again. So I, I really like that message in his story, and I really like the fact that I can relate to that, and, and that even the big guys, even the big adventurers, those who I look up to, have those difficult moments. So it makes me feel normal, it makes me feel like I'm on the right path. So I, I really do owe him a lot, um, and also part of my uh, route through the Pamirs was based on the fact that he'd been to the WAC. <laughs> and so he inspired me on my journey as well. His book, Walking the Himalayas, is incredible. Like I said, he's got several books out. You've probably seen his Channel 4 documentaries. Um, they're, they're great. His book will be linked below in the description, so you can check that out. Uh, definitely a really good read. And I think he's just brought a book out recently about his earlier years before he was in the military um, as a young man, on these travels, you know, even then he was he was a, a budding adventurer. So that's definitely worth a read as well. Another book that I was introduced to by my best mate Harry. The third guy I want to talk to you about 
This guy is insane, uh, in a good way. He walked the length of the Amazon from source to sea, which is just ridiculous when you say that. No one's ever done that before. People have you know, kayaked it, but never walked it. And that's just an insane feat on its own. But from that, he's uh, you know, written books and done series about surviving on his own in the elements. He was marooned on a desert island for more than 30 days, surviving just with what he had there. And through his series, Naked and Marooned, um, Marooned, and uh, I can't think of what the, the latest name of the series is, he basically maroons himself for a period of up to 10 days with nothing but the resources around him. So he has an emergency first aid kit and that's it. He doesn't have a knife, he doesn't have any equipment to catch food, and he relies on what he's learned over the years and you know just his instincts to survive for those 10 days whilst filming it on you know, a series of GoPros and sharing the adventure. And you watch that thinking how insane it is, but also how incredibly intelligent the methods that he's using are to thrive in those environments are. I mean, you want to be there, but you don't want to be there. It's ridiculously amazing. Uh, his book, Walking the Amazon, was awesome to read. It was insane. Over two years, you know, getting up, doing the same thing every day. Well, I suppose it's not doing the same thing every day because you're dealing with different issues. But I take a lot of personal inspiration from him because the way... His writing is so honest. Spoiler alert, when he started his journey along the Amazon, he started off with a friend. I believe his name was Luke or Sam. I think it's Luke. And um, they fell out, basically, along the way. And he's incredibly honest about how they fell out, um, about his criticisms of his mate and, and the thoughts that he had about his, himself, about how he was behaving as well. And the reason I draw a lot of inspiration from that is that at times when you're on these adventures, uh, I mean, personally, I've questioned what I'm doing. I've had thoughts about it. And... To be honest, I, I relate back to Ed because I, I feel like he makes me feel normal. Um, I know it's a bit crazy, but I look at someone who I admire, who inspires me as an adventurer, and I think, you know what, even he had doubts or even he felt like this. And uh, yeah, it gives me a lot of encouragement and I take a lot from that. Not to mention his programs are insane. Um, last guy I want to talk to you about is probably the one that I owe the most to. Um, and what I mean by that is this guy really, I mean, unlike the others in, in front of him, he's normal. Um, it's probably the worst way to say that. I apologise in advance. But what I mean is those guys all have military experience. They come from a military background. They've done their service. So they have an element of training in their mind for their situations. And I still believe that you know 90% of what they do comes from their own personality anyway and, and not this military training. But um, this guy is a normal person in the sense that he's never served in the military. One day he gets up, he opens his front door, he's got a second-hand bike, and he decides he's cycling around the world, and in he goes. Um, not quite as simple as that, I'm sure. But he cycles around the world over four years on a second-hand bike, and that just spoke to me that, you know what? You don't have to have all this incredible training to go and have these adventures. You can be an average person and go and do that. And, of course, I'm talking about Alistair Humphreys. I read this book, again, given to me by my best mate, Harry, and it just spoke to me about adventure in, in a completely different way. And I read that and decided, you know what, I'm going to go off and have my adventure. If, if he can do it, I can do that. And it, it, it took adventure into a, it made it a reality for me. And I've, and I've read the other books that he's written about micro adventures, a term he coined, which is an incredible concept. It's basically not making an excuse up to have an adventure. It's having an adventure in a nine to five life. So that's whether that's at the end of work, having a bag packed that you've taken to work. So at five, when you finish, you've got a bag with you and you go jump on a train for two hours in one direction and go and camp in a farmer's field so that you can watch the stars above you and get up the next day, pack your stuff. Short break on the weekend, you know, Friday, five o'clock comes, you've got everything packed and you're going down to Scotland to go and camp, you know, up a mountain. He, he has this concept where he basically takes away that excuse that you have to stop you having that adventure. And, it, and it's great. And he's written other books about planning big adventures. And this is just the first of a two book series that he writes about cycling around the world. And I'll link both of those books in the, in, in the description below. I mean, for me, this was the, the biggest influence, like I said, just because it, it made adventure normal for me. It made it seem like it was achievable, reachable, something that I could do. Um, and to me, that's incredibly important because recently I have come to that realisation that, you know, why do, why do we watch and read about these amazing people and their lives wishing that we can do that when, you know, we should get up and go and do that? And that's why inspiration is so important to me. That's why all these people are really important to me, because it's about setting yourself those goals, wanting to achieve those things, getting up and going to do it. 
Um, and that's incredible for me. And obviously these people inspire me for all of the various reasons that I've mentioned. But I take inspiration from many more aspects of my life, from my best mate Harry, from my family. I mean, my mum and dad especially have inspired me to achieve so many things in my life and continue to do so. And I think that's incredibly important. Um, so what I'm saying basically is I hope by the end of this video, I've inspired you a little bit to go out and seek that inspiration in your own life. You know, there's what people inspire you, what things inspire you, what story inspires you to get up and go and achieve your own adventure or set yourself goals and achieve those. Because as cliche as it sounds, you know, you get one chance to have this life and, and why waste it watching what other people are doing and not doing that yourself. So, you know, take something from this, go and find your own inspiration. I hope I've inspired you in that sense. And I hope you enjoyed the, the episode. If you did, Make sure you hit like below and subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of the upcoming episodes. Leave me a comment behind. Tell me what you thought of the episode. Tell me what um, inspires you. Tell me if there are any other books or, or people that I haven't mentioned here that are inspiring or that I should read. Um, I'm always looking for new inspiration. And uh, I'll see you next week.